All right, the Federal Reserve wrapped its two-day meeting today. And surprise, they decided to hold off on taking action. I'm going to bring in Congress's most vocal critic of the Fed, Representative Ron Paul. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you. Good to what, be with you. What is your reaction to today's decision? Well, not a big reaction. It's more of the same. I think they made it a little more enticing that they are more likely to do something by using the word will in one of their sentences. They will respond, but everybody knows that already, that they're going to respond. It's just what day are they going to do it? So we're one day closer for quantitative easing coming back again. So uh, it's the same old thing. It's just a shame that the whole marketplace, the whole world, you know, hangs on one word or one sentence or one comma. That's not the way markets are supposed to work. No, but it is the way markets are, are working. I mean, it, you essentially want to change that, right? I mean, you would like right. to audit the Fed or what do you think should change? Well, we would need to audit the Fed and find out why, what they do and why they do and maybe we can figure this out. But I, don't want, I like the marketplace and a lot of people on, in, uh, on Wall Street and different places, they, they say that they like free markets too. But we have monopoly control of interest rates. They're controlled by the central bank and they cause distortion. It's price fixing. Price fixing distorts market. Nobody wants wage and price controls to come back, but one half of our economy is working on a price control, price of money. So all the information you get from interest is felonious. It, it doesn't give you the right information. So when there's no savings and interest rates are 1%, Guess what? Bubbles form. Yeah. And then they have, they have to be corrected, and that's what we're in, and they won't allow the correction. So this is why we're in a stagmire. With, yeah. Do you uh, think auditing company. the Fed makes sense? I mean, to me, that seems like maybe you're putting more cooks in the kitchen. Perhaps what makes sense is very much limiting their mandate and what they can do. Well, no. I mean, you, you don't have any more cooks in the kitchen because it doesn't have anything to do with uh, uh, designing monetary policies. Just say that you are responsible for it. We need to know what you're doing. You're bigger than the whole Congress on what you spend and <clears throat> how, where these monies go. You, you don't have a right to bail out one company and dump on another country. The uh, Congress has a responsibility to, uh, to, to be in charge of monetary policy. They certainly have a responsibility for uh, transparency and auditing and, 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 and looking at what people do. But because it's, they've been negligent, the Fed does whatever they want, they're prepared to bail out Europe and everybody else, and they did that once already. And it's very damaging. It's, uh, it just doesn't damage the big guys, the too big to fail. They love it. Who That's does it damage? I mean, it. what is the harm of having the Fed unleash well, the way they are? Oh, look at the middle class. It's shrinking. It's been shrinking for 10 years. But that's the Fed's and, fault? I don't know if we can blame that sure. on the Fed. How? Why not? Why not? Because the Fed creates the bubble, and the correction is a result of the bubble. So we knew the bubble was there and advised that interest rates were too low too long, and, and a bunch of us were saying, don't do it, don't do it. So the correction has to iron out the mistakes, and that's your recession. But then when you don't allow the recession to proceed quickly and let the bankruptcies go, then you prolong the agony, and that's where we are. We're where we were in the Depression, we were where the Japanese have been for 20 years, and right now we do not allow the correction to be made. No liquidation. So, of would debt, you like no to just really limit their mandate so that really what they're there for is to stabilize the dollar? I mean, I think it is fair to say that they certainly served a purpose when the financial system was seizing during the financial crisis to preventing a run on the bank. But, you know, maybe by the time we get to QE3, they've gone a little too far. Would you like to limit their mandate <laughs> yeah, to what? Yeah, yeah, to like what? they can't monitor. Well, they can't monetize debt. Just think if the Congress didn't have the backup of the Fed. See, they're in bed together. The politicians spend the money. They take care of the military industrial complex. They take care of the welfare state. They don't worry about deficits. And the Fed always is there because they're the lender of last resort. They always buy the debt to keep the interest rates low to make Wall Street happy. And usually it ends up in a mess, and that's where we are. They can get us out of recessions now and then, but until the bubble gets too big. And the bubble is too big in, the, in 07, 08. We knew how big the bubble was, and they're doing everything exactly wrong, and they cannot allow the correction to occur if they dump the debt on the people. Do you, are the you getting a lot of shrinking. support for this? <laughs> Go to the college campuses, the kids that are inheriting this. Well, yeah, in, I get a in lot Congress, of support are you it. getting support for limiting the Fed's role? Well, the first big step was find out what they're doing, and I got only 98 people 
uh, voting against the auditing the Fed, and uh, it, it was very clear that transparency is what the people want, and that's what the members did, and it was bipartisan. So we're making great strides in finding out and calling attention to the organization that gives us the booms and gives us the inevitable busts that occur yeah. after they manipulate the economy, pretending that they're going to take care of us all. It's central economic planning with monetary policy. And it's doomed to fail. We're witnessing its failure, and we need to wake up and decide we need a different system. Yeah. Congressman Ron Paul, thank you so much for joining us tonight.